emotion. The passion. Epic highlights. Inspirational stories. Unrivaled coverage. Rise up, Houston. This is H-Town High School Sports. Here's your host, Todd Freed. Hey, hello, everyone, and welcome to H-Town High School Sports. I'm Todd Freed. It was down to the state finals in the UIL football playoffs, where we begin in Class 6A Division I with the North Shore Mustangs facing Duncanville for the fifth time in the last six years in the state final. North Shore won three of the four previous meetings, but Duncanville is the defending state champ. This time around, both teams owned undefeated 15-0 records entering the title game. And this, our Fred Hass Auto Group Game of the Week. The North Shore Mustangs back at Cowboy Stadium looking for their fifth state championship in the last nine seasons. Big crowd from North Shore on hand. But opening possession, LSU commit Caden Durham of Duncanville. Right side, 26-yard touchdown, 7 to nothing Panthers. North Shore on offense now. Caleb Bailey back to throw, scrambles a bit, then fires to Terrence Guillory, and down the sidelines he goes. Almost scores. Guillory steps out at the five-yard line. Great play. Then the direct snap will go to DeAndre Hardiman. Five yards for the touchdown. Game tied at seven. Still in the first quarter. Duncanville facing second and 23. They'll get that and a lot more. Caden Durham again. He breaks out of there, turns on the speed. 72-yard touchdown, and it's 14-7 Duncanville. Later in the first quarter, Panthers back with the ball. Keelan Russell to throw. He goes long to DeCorian Moore. On the money, what a pass. 39-yard touchdown, 21-7 Duncanville after one in the second. It's Durham again. He breaks a tackle, and then he will outrun all defenders. A spectacular 92-yard touchdown, 28-7. Durham already with over 200 rushing yards. North Shore responds with a nice drive, but they settle for a 26-yard field goal from Jonathan Soto, 28-10. Still in the second, Panthers, Russell fires a strike to Zach Turner, and he gets in for the touchdown, 28 yards, 35-10 Panthers. Late in the half for the Mustangs, Caleb Bailey to Chris Barnes for the touchdown, 35-17 at half. Third quarter now, Russell goes back to work. He will go deep over the middle, and connects with Zach Turner. 72-yard touchdown, and it's 42-20. Panthers on top. Early fourth quarter, Mustangs battle back. Bailey to Chris Barnes. Barnes, nice moves. Touchdown, 42-26. The try for two was no good. Midway through the fourth, North Shore down 49-26. Bailey goes deep, and Dion DeBlanc, great diving catch. That was nice. Then, Bailey back to throw again. He'll fire to Jalen Bocard, and that is a touchdown, 49-33, but they would get no closer. North Shore falls in the state title game. Emotional loss for the Mustangs, but what a season for North Shore, finishing 15-1 and, and yet another berth to the state finals. Your Fred Hass Auto Group, game of the week. In Class 6A Division II, Umbo ISD's Summer Creek Bulldogs advance to the state finals for the first time in school history with a 14-1 record. The Bulldogs face the undefeated and defending state champion DeSoto Eagles in the 6A state title game. There's the Summer Creek Bulldogs marching out of the tunnel and onto the field at Cowboy Stadium. But this game belonged to DeSoto. First possession for the Eagles. Marvin Duffy takes a handoff. Huge opening, 54-yard touchdown. They got a two-point conversion. It was 8-0, just like that. DeSoto's very next possession. DeAndre Ryden on the run. 14-yard score, 15-0. Still in the first quarter. Darius Bailey to pass. 
finds Dalen Singleton. Touchdown, 26 yards, 22 to nothing. Later in the first quarter, the same duo, Bailey deep to Singleton. He has it in stride, 55 yards. It's 29 to nothing. Summer Creek does cut the lead. Here's Lloyd Avant, a six yard touchdown. It's 29 to seven. Finally, the Summer Creek fans with something to cheer about. But DeSoto's in swing possession. Bailey to Singleton, 55 yard score. It's 36 seven after one. In the second quarter, Bailey takes it in, 46 seven at half. A tough night for Summer Creek. 74 to 14 the final. DeSoto defends its state championship. Summer Creek finishes 14 and two on the season. Now, as I mentioned, this was the first ever state final for Summer Creek, getting there with a dominant victory over Cibolo Steel in last week's state semifinals. More now on a historic season for the Bulldogs, who we recognize as our Stellar Bank Team of the Week. When Summer Creek quarterback Blake Thomas connected with Lloyd Avant on a screen pass and early first quarter 25-yard touchdown, the Bulldogs were off and running to a decisive 38-15 victory over Cibolo Steel in the 6A Division II state semifinals, earning the Bulldogs their first ever berth to the state championship game. It's definitely very special. Um, our kids have worked extremely hard. This senior class is a phenomenal class. Um, they've done everything we asked them to do, and, and, and it's rewarding to see them um, go up and play for a state championship. It feels good to know that my class came in during COVID year, and, and, and that was a very rough time. And now that we've worked all four years and to be able to make this to, state, to the state championship with my brothers, it, it's an amazing feeling. An amazing feeling for the entire Bulldogs nation, and especially head coach Kenny Harrison as evident by the jubilant post-game celebration. Just a, um, a feeling I can't describe, just to see out the excitement on our kids' face um, after working so extremely hard and me chasing um, the opportunity to play for a state championship since, since I was in high school. Um, just an overly excited feeling for the Class 24, our community, its football team, administration, and unbiased as a whole. The state semifinals victory was the ninth in a row for the Bulldogs. The only blemish all season, a close loss to undefeated North Shore back in district play. Along the way, Thomas has accounted for 3,200 yards of offense and 39 touchdowns, while Avon has rushed for nearly 2,200 yards and 29 touchdowns. Just two first-class young men. They do a tremendous job of leading our football team. They come out and they prepare each and every week. Um, they're leaders on and off the field, so I'm glad the ball's in those two guys' hands. With its 14-1 record facing a gauntlet of a schedule and a berth to the state finals, it's truly been a historic season for Summer Creek. It's due to our senior leadership. Um, our goal was to get a competitive non-district schedule to prepare us for a district and then get into a competitive district that prepared us for the playoffs, and that's the reason that we're in the position that we're in now. We're all one, you know? We, we all bond. We're just a big family, and we just love each other. And we are here on campus at Summer Creek. Head coach Kenny Harrison. Coach, congratulations again on making school history. On behalf of our sponsor, Stellar Bank, we are proud to present you this plaque as our H-Town High School Sports Stellar Bank Team of the Week. Yeah! In Class 4A Division II football, the Belleville Bramas advanced to the state finals for the first time in 46 years. Undefeated Belleville with a lofty 15-0 record face the Gilmer Buckeyes in Friday's state championship game. The town of Belleville in full force at Cowboy Stadium. What a crowd. Opening drive for the Bramus. The gift to Sam Raniski. He busts out of there and he's going to go. 66 yards for the touchdown. It was 7 to nothing. Belleville. After Gilmore rallied for a 14-7 lead, second quarter, a rare pass for Belleville. Zach Luschner goes deep. Didi Murray has it, and he's gone. 72-yard touchdown, 14-13, but the extra point was blocked. Back comes Gilmer. Will Henderson takes it, and Henderson gets out of there. He's gone. Check out the speed. 65 yards for the touchdown. 
Later in the second quarter, back comes Belleville. Sam Reniski on the give and another long touchdown run. This time he goes 77 yards for the score and that cuts the lead to 21 to 20. Final minute of the half, Gilmer quarterback Caden Tennyson to throw to Ta Eric Tate. Perfect pass, 69 yards, 28-20, Buckeyes at half. Third quarter, Belleville drives it down. Corey on Hood, four-yard touchdown, it's 28-26, but the two-point try was no good. Under a minute to go, Gilmer facing fourth and six, and Henderson on the carry, he battles for the first down, and that ices the victory. Belleville falls in a heartbreaker, 28 to 26. Tremendous state final. What a season for the Bramas, but Gilmer celebrates the state title. Up ahead, much more on the Bramas as we pay a visit to Belleville for a very special report. In basketball, a big win for Jordan and lots of Olajuwon sightings for the Clemens Rangers. Welcome back to H Town High School Sports. I'm Todd Freed. More football in just a minute, but first, some great hoops action where it's been a sensational start to the season for the Clemens Rangers. Clemens carried an undefeated 12 0 record into its District 26A matchup against the Ridge Point Panthers. Here comes Clemens looking to stay undefeated. Rockets legend Hakeem Olajuwon on hand for good reason. He has two sons on the team, including this guy, Aziz Olajuwon for three. Then Divine Yugo Chukwu for the Rangers to Olajuwon. Gets fouled, count the bucket. Dorian Hayes the other way for Rich Point. Step back three, it's good. 11-7 Panthers. Here's Olajuwon. He drives, spins, and the nice finger roll. Sebastian Sanchez now for Ridge Point takes it, hits a three. Ridge Point up 20 to 14 after one. Then back to Olajuwon in the corner for three, and he hits it. Then for the Rangers, Divine Yugo Chukwu. He'll hit a three. It's good. 35 31. Clemens at half. Divine had 25 points. Here's Yugo Chukwu again in the third quarter. Takes it, he spins right there and hits the bucket. But Ridge Point keeping it tight. Nick Oliveri drives, lays it in. They're up by one, 2.30 to go. Clemens answers, it's Olajo in again. Another three, he scored 27 points. And then Olajo on one more time. This time he finds an opening, he drives and he slams it. Ridge Point now, last chance. Four seconds to go. They're down by three. Dorian Hayes looking, but it's a large one with the rejection. Where have I heard that one before? And that ices it for Clemens. They go to 13 and 0 and win 63 to 60. Jordan Warriors hosting Cinco Ranch, District 17-6A. Early on for Cinco Ranch, Noah Pierce for the Cougars takes it, and Pierce hits a three. They went up early. Back comes Jordan. Jaden Holt had a huge game. Through traffic, up and in. Cougars right back. Pat Orogo drives. He gets fouled, and count the bucket. For the Warriors, here's Holt. He fakes, launches a three. He scored 32 points, tied at 15 after one. Warriors again, Jalen Black drives and off the glass and in. Then Corey Nicholson to Jacob Oyookum to Jude Oyookum and he slams it. 2018 Jordan, single Ranch now. Dylan Jones Bynum to Noah Pierce for three, hits it. Jordan led 32-25 at half. There is head coach Neil King of Cinco Ranch rallying his troops, but Jordan came out strong in the third. Corey Nicholson hits a three. Then for the Warriors, Jaden Holt takes it. Off balance jumper is good. The Cougars answer. Tatum Johnson, this is nice. The 360 spin, the foul, and the bucket. Count it. Warriors right back. Jalen Black in the corner for three, and bullseye. 
Cinco Ranch back the other way. Jones Bynum drives. He gets fouled and scores, but Jordan was still up by 14. Warriors stay in control. Ryan Fadika, strong drive and the bucket. Warriors win 67-54. They go 14-3 on the season. Back to football. As we highlighted, the Belleville Bramas advanced to the state football finals for the first time since 1977. In what's been a sensational season, we made our way over to Austin County, where the Bramas are unquestionably the pride of Belleville. Here in historic Belleville, it's all about the Bramas, from storefronts to even the real thing. Albeit these days, this town is most bullish over these Bramas. The Belleville Bramas have advanced to the state finals for the first time since 1977. Well, it's a special time, there's no doubt about it. Uh, you know, our community is super excited, really all of Belleville, America. I mean, the town's shut, gonna shut down Friday. Uh, school's been canceled and, and the town's shutting down and we're gonna have a sea of red show up in Arlington. We're all really excited. I've been dreaming this since I was a little boy. I was watching my brother play, his friends, always around them, coming to their practices. Now, it's unbelievable, really. It's just like a dream for all of us, you know. We've been, we've been playing ball together since we were young and it's always been a dream of ours. And you know, you just walk around town or walk through school and people will be con congratulating you. You know, people you don't really know, but they know who you are. And you know, it's just a great feeling. A great feeling for a team that is quite literally the talk of the town. As we found out firsthand at the legendary Belleville Meat Market, where let's just say the football team is a cut above the rest. I know they haven't been to a state since I believe the 70s. So it's just an exciting thing for everybody in town. Everybody's talking about it, big buzz. We're excited about the game coming up Friday at three in Arlington and we just, we can't wait to see what happens. This town is excited. The boys are awesome. You know them personally. You feel like they belong in your family and you want the best for them. How else could we all feel? The Bramas have been an immense source of pride while earning a berth to the 4A Division II state final with an undefeated 14-0 record, including a heart-stopping 35-33 win over previously undefeated Wimberley in the state semifinals, stopping a two-point conversion attempt in the final seconds to preserve the victory. It's an opportunity that you dream of having, you know, to go to the state championship, uh, it coming down to one play, and being able to see the ball come up short, it's just amazing. We knew it was going to be a tough game, and it was. It was a slugfest, and uh, just really, re really proud of the way our kids responded to the adversity. They got punched in the mouth, and they punched back. Loads of punch, while averaging 52 points a game in its 15 straight victories. The so-called three-headed monster of backfield mates Dee Dee Murray, Corey Hood, and Sam Raniski have combined for a remarkable 5,400 rushing yards and 83 touchdowns between the trio. A staggering rushing total for the threesome. Do you guys like being called the three-headed monster? I do like being called three-headed monster. All three of us have different running styles. So Dee Dee Murray is kind of the explosive guy. And obviously Corian, he picks up tough yards. And I kind of hit the hole and a little mixture of both. So I think that's a hard thing for defenses to stop. No stopping at all in a truly historic season for the Belleville Bramas. Welcome back to H-Town High School Sports. I'm Todd Freed. Off the field this week, the area's top players and coaches were honored at the Touchdown Club of Houston's High School Football Awards Dinner. For the 44th year, the Touchdown Club of Houston honored the area's top players and coaches at its annual High School Awards Dinner. Offensive Player of the Year finalist Tristan Brown became the Lamar Texans all-time leading receiver this past season. It's a true blessing. I always, I always wanted to be one of the ones to, to just be remembered at Lamar football and just be the ones to just hold the legacy up there. 
It was a spectacular season for Westfield Mustangs running back and Offensive Player of the Year finalist Taji Atkins, who rushed for nearly 2,600 yards and 34 touchdowns this season. Well, with me being here today, man, it means a lot. I know how much work I didn't put in behind closed doors, and, man, safe to say that it's finally paying off. So it means a lot for me to be here, to be one of the finalists. Looking forward to going home with the plaque. Yes, sir. The Offensive Player of the Year award would ultimately go to Cy Fair Bobcats quarterback Trey Owens. The Texas Longhorns commit threw for 3,300 yards and 43 touchdowns this past season. The Defensive Player of the Year finalists included the likes of five-star Oak Ridge linebacker Justin Williams, who will next play football for the Georgia Bulldogs. This is a special moment, you know, just to be honored here and just be with these amazing people. It's just a great blessing from God, and I wouldn't ask for anything better. The Defensive Player of the Year winner was North Shore's Dylan Dixon, a key component to a dominant Mustangs defense that's paved the way to the 6A state finals. The Coach of the Year award was shared by state finalist coaches Willie Gaston of North Shore and Summer Creek's Kenny Harrison. Now, while at the big event, I caught up with Vibe Media's Matt Malatesta for more on the very best from this past football season. And yes, I am joined by Matt Malatesta of Vibe Media. Matt, great players honored here. Let's talk about the teams. The final three from Greater Houston, of course, from the same district, North Shore and Summer Creek. How about that? An amazing season again. You know, there's a seamless transition. You have John Kay, he goes to Rice to be an assistant coach, and now you have Willie Gaston come in to be the head coach. State championship appearance again, amazing for them. Summer Creek, what a great season for Kenny Harrison. And this is school history for them, and they're doing it on defense. They're a team that's a super sleeper, or what's a super sleeper all year that nobody was really talking about. And uh, two teams from the same district shows you how tough District 21 6A. And in Class 3A, I was in Belleville myself this week, and that's a fun group, but what a season by the Bramas. I tell you what, that city has gone wild for Belleville, and they're good at everything, kind of every sport they're really good at, but they're really involved in high school athletics in that town, and what a ride they have taken that community on. And you know, it's the Bramas, not the Brahmas. Yes. I stand corrected. And you know, the field is the pasture of pain. Isn't that appropriate? <laughs> it is so appropriate. Again, great marketing out there for that small town. All right, what a fun season it's been, hasn't it? Yeah, it's been an amazing year. Another great year. Houston representing very well throughout the state of Texas. All right, Matt Malatesta, thanks very much. Welcome back to H Town High School Sports. I'm Todd Free. Tis the season to feel the rhythm with the Rhythm Energy Electrifying Plays of the Week. What a game from Jordan Warrior Jaden Holt scores a school record 32 points against Seco Ranch. Same game. How about the brotherly connection? Jacob Oyolkum to Jade Oyolkum for the slam. Same game. Seco Ranch's Tatum Johnson, 360 spin, fouled in the bucket, but Jordan won the game. Rockets legend Hakeem Olajuwon on hand to see his son put on quite a show for Clemens. Aziz Olajuwon drives and slams. Same game, final seconds. Ridge point down by three. Dorian Hayes shot, rejected by Olajuwon. Where have I heard that before? Clemens wins the game. 4A Division II State Finals, Belleville Bramas, Sam Reniski with the big 68-yard touchdown run, but the Bramas lose a heartbreaker to Gilmer. North Shore Mustangs against Duncanville. Quarterback Caleb Bailey goes deep, and Dion DeBlanc with a great diving catch, but not enough as Duncanville defends its state title. Your Rhythm Energy electrifying plays of the week. All right, electrifying as always. Thanks for watching, everyone. Until next time, stay H-Town proud.